continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Conley as Norman Harrington. Anne Howard has returned to Peyton Place to learn the truth about her unhappy past. With Michael Rossi, she has found the beginnings of a future. Mike, you're wonderful. Wait a minute. You mean generally or specifically? Both. All right, let's have specific first. I don't want you to forget anything. Well, I never really anticipated how difficult it would be for me to come back to Peyton Place, to live here, to face the bluff, to see Chris Weber, my so-called victim, to see his blindness. And I never could have done it, any of it, without you, Mike. Well, you slide over and I'll take you home, right? Huh? what? Well, I don't want you going home at this hour of the night alone. You'd have a long walk back. So what? A walk would do me good. And you'd do at the hospital in, in five hours. Now, who's the doctor here? Sometimes I wonder. All right. And I, uh, I was wondering about something. Mike, everything's all right. You made me feel that way. You don't have to drive me home and then walk back. I don't want to go, but I'll see you tomorrow. All right, you drive slowly now. In this car? <laughs> yeah. Mike, you don't have any doubts, do you? No. You sure? I want you to be sure about yourself now. What about them? I, I don't know. Maybe you won't have to know about that. I wish I could just dismiss it. Why? I haven't dismissed it. I know what happened. A boy got pushed over the bluff, and he's blind now. Someone was guilty. But that doesn't mean they have to be guilty now. And I've seen you working at the hospital. I've seen you working with the children. I know you. I've been with you, and... I love you. I'm sorry, did I frighten you? No, no, it just startled me. I'm sorry anyway. I was using the sound of your car to get my bearings. It never occurred to me the driver might be a girl, might spook. You are upset, I can tell. No, I'm, I'm fine now. Good night. Hey, wait for a minute, will you? You mind if I check my bearings? We are near the boarding house, Mrs. Hewitt's, right? You seem to know the wharf very well. Oh, I used to come down here all the time, especially at night. The wharf's kind of a special place at night, don't you think? I haven't thought about it. Most people haven't. 
By now, the smells of the sea have had a chance to clean out all the smells of garbage and motors. Do you smoke? Yes, why? I have run out of cigarettes. You wouldn't happen to have one, would you? Hey, I have a better idea. Have one with me before you go in. It'll be your treat, but I'll allow you to sit on my bench. Your bench? Over there. It's been mine for years, between midnight and dawn. A cigarette or half a bench? That sounds like a square deal. Come along then, I'll lead the way. What do you usually do when you run out of cigarettes after everything is closed? You mean when there are any strange young girls around? Actually, there is a machine behind the garage where my brother works. I smoke the fourth button from the left. Now you probably want me to go buy my own, don't you? No. You don't sound too positive. I make you nervous, because I'm blind. Perhaps a little. Don't be. I'm quite used to it, and there's really nothing you can do about it. So let's have that cigarette. I uh, have some matches in here somewhere. I'll get it. Heads up now, I don't want to burn you. You must be new in Peyton Place. How did you uh, decide that? Process of deduction. You're staying at Mrs. Hewitt's boarding house. No one as young as you would live there by choice. So. You've just arrived in town, and you're looking for a job. How am I doing? Wrong. I have a job. Why? I needed one. I meant why here? Why in Peyton Place? I, there was a job opening. I took it. How about you? What do you do besides walking along the wharf at night? I go to school in Boston. I'm just here on vacation like it here. I suppose this is your home. Yeah, I, I grew up here. I don't know that I like it. Let's say things slow down to a comprehensible pace. Smells and sounds are clear, nice, like this wharf tonight. Some things do look better in the darkness. It's all right, I know. I could see when I was a child. I remember night as something more special than day. I'm sorry I said that. Don't be. I'm glad you forgot for a moment. I don't like girls who want to mother me, who don't let me forget because they don't want to forget. You're going in? Yes, sir, you have to. Thanks for the cigarette and the company. By the way, my name is Chris Weber. I'd like to talk to you again sometime. I promise to stock up on cigarettes. Good night. You forgot your cigarettes. Oh, that's all right. You keep them. Good night, Mr. Weber. You're going to eat your breakfast. Take it away. That's not what I asked. I'll eat when you bring me something worthwhile eating, Hannah. I wish you'd get rid of that portrait. If you could have seen the way that girl, Anne, was staring at it last night. What if she had seen the initials on it? Her father's initials, his signature, all recognized his style. You said she didn't. I said she didn't seem to. If you could have seen the way she was staring at it. Martin, please. 
Let me take it down. No. Do we have to be constantly reminded? What is this, some sort of grotesque punishment for her sins? And our own. Yes, it is a reminder. I hate that hate. Good. Hatred is strength. It's there to remind us not to stop hating Hannah, ever. Tonight I offered him the agreement. I was afraid. He could have turned it down. He said he came at me with that broken bottle. And he could have killed you. He almost did. From that moment on, I knew that Colby would play our game. There was no longer any point in being afraid. Hate him, Anna. I've dealt with him before. I'll deal with him again. Don't be afraid. We're vulnerable, Martin. You and I vulnerable? Never. Yes. Because now you love Rodney, and don't deny it. And Stephen is my son. Hannah, if you don't pull yourself together, I'll... You'll what? What will you do, Martin? Will you fire me? Or do you want to make a new deal? What is it worth it to you, Martin, to keep me quiet? A million? Two million? Understand this, Martin. I want my son. You have no son. For a moment, I was frightened to death. I just wanted to run, but he stood in my way. So we just talked. We stood out on the wharf and talked in the dark. You're certain he didn't know who you were? I'm positive. Stephen, he is intelligent and sensitive and seemed friendly. Well, why shouldn't he, after all? He... You know, I used to dream about him falling. Maybe they're right. Maybe I did push him. Now, what happened to the Ann Howard who walked in here a few weeks ago and convinced me that she believed in her own innocence? That Ann Howard ran away when she met Chris Weber. And when he learns who I am... He's not going to do anything. Now, I know it was a shock for you to meet Chris Weber. I understand that. But you're acting as though he identified you, accused you, held a trial, and found you guilty. You've got to continue believing in your innocence. Because now, I do. And I want to know about anyone who tries to convince you otherwise. Okay, I'll uh, let you know. Did you forget to tell me something? There's something else, isn't there? No, I guess. That wasn't very convincing. Stephen, I... I very much appreciate the fact that you believe me. I really do, because not everybody does. Oh? I'm concerned about your mother. My mother? Last night, Michael Rossi took me to the Peyton house because he had to attend to Mr. Peyton. The way your mother acted towards me, she's judged me already. Anne, did my mother say anything to you? Nothing hostile, if that's what you mean. Just her attitude? She's a very reserved person. Yes, but she called me Colby. She said Miss Colby. Now, why would she use my maiden name if she hadn't thought a great deal about that day on the bluff, huh? Well, I discussed you with her briefly. I asked her what she remembered about that day. She didn't go down to the police station with the rest of the parents. She didn't remember any details. As a matter of fact, she said she'd never seen you or your father before. Stephen, when we first met your mother and I on the square, she looked as if, well, as if I were a representative of the devil himself. And the next day with Mr. Payton, she acted strangely, too. And last night again. We were alone for just a few moments together. We both tried to talk, but with her it was a struggle. I felt such, well, tension and an atmosphere of hate. Now, this is exactly what you've got to be careful of. Creating tensions within yourself, creating guilts within yourself and projecting them on other people, making them mirrors for you to look into. And suppose they aren't mirrors. Suppose people do feel this way. Suppose you're mother... I don't suppose. Knows. About my mother, about Chris Weber, about anyone. Or anything. Now, we're going to find out. Isn't that what you want? <laughs> 